So my name is Julie Macklow. I am the CEO of the Macklow American Single Malt, which I'm very excited to be launching uh, this December in New York City. So I am married to Billy Macklow, who I feel like you guys have featured many times, and he is a prominent New York real estate family, I'd say with himself and his father, Harry, they're quite well known in the Maclo of New York world. It was actually Kent Swig, another real estate person who was formerly married to my husband's sister, Liz, that said when I got married, whiskey a day and you'll stay married. Real estate's very illiquid. I would say this is by definition liquid. (laughs) It turns out that probably the whiskey business and casks have gone up as a asset class more than any other asset in the last 25 years. If I go and make a thousand barrels for like, let's say a hundred dollars, those barrels in four years are now worth $400 without selling a product. So it's really hard when you think about fashion or traditional businesses to think of another business with the exception of actually real estate where the actual asset goes up and you could do nothing to it, right? I mean, real estate's actually pretty similar in that if you own a great building, in theory, even if you don't put in CapEx, inflation and the economy will just bring up the asset price over time. I mean, I always joke with my husband, we can go past any building we have ever owned and wish we still had it, right? So it's one of those industries, like you're happy when you sell and then you're always like, why did I sell that? I feel like whiskey's very similar. Like You're like, oh gosh, I drank that bottle. I should have kept it. (laughs) And I realized I have all these amazing scotches, like starting 1936 to present day. I have amazing Japanese whiskeys, Irish, Canadian, but I didn't have like any luxury American single malt. I realized I might get one good cask here, one good cask there, but there was actually a lack of aged American single malt because it's still not actually totally approved yet as a category. Then I realized, oh my God, if I really want to do this, I've got to make it myself. And I think the result of that was that we've come up with a really nice expression of what American single malt is for me, which is not bourbon and it's not scotch, but it's truly a new category. You can go buy jewelry, but unless you're buying deco or beautiful colored stones, those go down in value. The exception are things like real estate, gold, maybe flawless diamonds. And frankly, whiskey is one of those categories where if I were to go buy a barrel of bourbon tomorrow, it's worth more than it was today, which is sort of crazy. When you look at like real estate or diamonds or a lot of these things, you need a lot of capital to put in, to invest in them. You can buy a bottle of whiskey for a couple hundred dollars and just hold on to it or a couple thousand dollars for a good high quality one. And likely in five years, that bottle be worth significantly more. So every year I produce barrels, obviously there's a huge capital cost to those barrels because we're not doing one or two of them. We're doing hopefully more and more every year. Luckily we've financed them with equity, but it is definitely common practice that you can pledge your barrels and you can finance them. All of our packaging is done by handcrafting. And this idea that we were going to be the first luxury whiskey on the market, like a Birkin bag, like a Rolex, and really appealing to the people we know. So we're launching in places like Jean Georges, Danielle, Pavillon, Casa Cipriani's, the Polo Bar, Lola Taverna, sort of the who's who of the iconic New York restaurants. And frankly, to the same people who were pre-allocated bottles, who I'd say are all the who's who of your real estate world. And I want to have a product that would rank against any whiskey of the world, whether it's Scotland or Japan or anywhere, and be American. Because at the end of the day, I feel like the Macklow real estate family is a iconic American brand. My mother and father-in-law started it from nothing. So, and they're definitely well-known in New York City. So I thought that was part of the reason the name should be the Maclo. I felt like it represents the American dream that you can start something from literally nothing and end up with an empire.